Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. It's your monk here again. So today I want to talk about <clears throat> focusing on goals, aspirations, uh, things that are important in life, but also at the same time, uh, keeping in line with Dharma, staying focused on Dharma and staying focused on the goal of, uh, of the Buddha teachings, which is uh, the third noble truth, the cessation, cessation of Dukkha, Nirodo, right? what we're trying to get to and what's important is <clears throat> even as monks um, not that uh, I want to speak on behalf of monks or telling monks what to do because monks know what to do if someone's already ordained as a monk they know what to do they've they've already made that aspiration they've already gone forth so I don't need to say much here <laughs> but in general, um, you know this is more for lay people this channel than it is for monks occasionally I think Monks may watch this, um, but I doubt it. So in terms of aspirations in life and goals in life, um, the most important thing are the four, are the four uh, needs, are the four necessary things um, that the Buddha talks about that we should reflect on. So one is food and, food and water, food, right? Uh, the dwelling, you know, roof over your head clothes right and medicine like they're the four basics of life right without those four things um life can be very very difficult if you don't have food or if you don't have medicine when you need it or you don't have clothes to keep you warm when it gets cold um, or you don't have a roof over your head life can be quite difficult and uh quite burdensome and uh well you know depressing and all those things right so those four things are necessary in life they're the needs now more than that becomes more of a want a want and desire things you want things you want to have things you want to achieve in life in terms of like career or uh, things like you know material things comforts um, family you know a relationship all those kind of things right so those things kind of come second. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because I'm talking in line with the, four no, the, the, the Noble Eightfold Path and in being aware, being sat, using Sati, being aware and having mental organization. Because as I, as I say, as I've said it all uh, many, many times, mental health is important, right, for everything you do. Being Mental clarity is very important. So being organized and knowing the difference between needs and wants um, is, is absolutely essential and should be a life skill. It should, should have been something we were taught from the beginning in school, except what we're, also, what we're generally taught from society is, you know, go for your dreams, you know, get everything you can, um, have the family, have everything. But we, we, we jump to that without understanding that first we need to take care of ourselves first. We need to have the basic needs met first before we can really be of use to ourselves and others. Because if, if you can't have, if you're not getting food and water for yourself every day, if you're not feeding, you don't have that ability to feed yourself every day, if you don't have the ability to clothe yourself every day, if you don't have a roof over your head and you're not able to get medicine when you need it, then really you're not taking care of your own needs in terms of the body, right? Now this doesn't encompass mental health, but mental health does have, um, something to do with this in, in indirectly in the sense that when you have a roof over your head and you know that that's the place where you can sleep and do whatever you need to do and when you when you're well clothed or have enough clothes and you have and you're well fed you have enough food for the day and you have medicine when you need it that is for your mind that is quite uh, it, it sets a like you're quite relaxed in that sense like this it's you're, you're out of that survival mentality and you're starting to thrive because you have your basic needs met and this is very important right uh, in, in, in terms of the buddhist life too particularly right so these four things are necessary and these are the basics of living in this world right of how to survive in this world they're the four survival things that are necessary every day and food and water are a big thing in our society and and, and this can go on to a really long and, and uh, tedious discussion, but securing food and water for yourself and your community 
is important, right? It's very important because uh, food and water is necessary for life, all right? So these things here are, are important. Now, when we get to the advanced things, for example, when we start talking about career or wanting to be in a relationship or wanting to have more than that, okay, now that, these, these fall into the category of wants. They fall into the category of wants. So mentally, you should be aware of this. Like we should know this and, and be aware of like what our needs are and what our wants are. Now, the Buddha said dukkha in, the, in the setting the wheel of Dharma in motion he, he briefly defines dukkha, and one of the definitions is not getting what you want. Not getting what you want is dukkha. And I think we should reflect on that. That doesn't get much uh, airtime or much focus um, about not getting what you want is dukkha. So in other words, the Buddha says, I want to get what I want, but you can't. Because it's, it's like a, it's, it's not getting what you want. Or Sometimes you get what you want, but... And sometimes you don't. It's, it's, and, and it's sometimes you get what you want, and then you realize it's not what you want. So this is, very, this is a very interesting reflection, this one. Not getting what you want is dukkha as well, right? It's, it's stressful. It's, it's painful. So, you, some, you know, how many people work 40, 50 years or their whole lives and dedicate to something in the end to um, not really get there or achieve it, right? This, this is a daily occurrence for a lot of individuals. It doesn't matter... Uh, poor, rich, middle, whatever, whatever your financial status or whatever clout status you have or, or how famous you are, everyone has this problem in a lot of ways of not getting what they want. And and uh, there's also the problem is you think you got what you want or you, th you know, the old term, the old cliche is be careful what you wish for. You might get it. And when you get it, it's not how you saw it, right? Or how you, you, how you visualized it. Or maybe you visualized it, but you didn't take all the other factors into consideration, right? So it's like uh, like a poor person or someone who doesn't have the who's on forty thousand dollars a year wishes for a million dollar car. They get the million dollar car through a lottery or something, and then they realize it costs twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year to run that car, and they only earn forty forty thousand dollars a year. So they probably didn't take that into consideration, right? So that that's just a kind of example, right? So. There are levels, and you've got to be ready for that level um, to sustain that level of status or financial, uh, I guess, financial uh, financial status, I guess, repeating the word, sorry. So coming back to needs and wants, so in life, like, so we start off, right? Well, now, if the Buddhist goal is not concerned, if Dharma is not in the picture, the needs and wants become pretty much central. To your life so in school we, we're taught to do mathematics learn geography learn everything about the world but not learn how to <clears throat> forage for food and water how to secure our food and water supplies how to secure housing how to secure clothing how to secure medicine for ourselves how to secure the basic things in life first right so this is something that's always jumped over and we go straight to well what are you going to be a footballer a, a, a um, you know, you're going to be a computer analyst, you're going to be an actor, you're going to be a singer, all these things, but we're failing to recognize the basic needs. Now, mentally, it's very important, the importance of um, having um, dwelling and, and, and those four requisites are, in, are, are like the basics, the fundamentals to life, and these are important, right? So then when we get to the wants, now these can always get out of hand, and some of these pursuits can take us our whole lives, and a lot of people will never achieve them unfortunately right so and are these pursuits necessary to live um, a content happy you know are they necessary for happiness are they necessary for being content are they necessary for tranquility are they necessary to be, have a serene mind and more importantly do they lead to a steady mind now this is where Dharma comes into the picture now Dharma we need to consider the four detriments for any, the birth uh, sickness, old age, and death. Now, death, right? Now, death. Now, death is very important because we will get old. Now, when we get old, if our four basic requirements are not there, that can be a very, very, uh, let's say, suffering, a very, very terrible old age. I mean, I've seen it happen many, many times, right? Many, many times a lot of old people getting abandoned and just left um, and, uh, you know, not much money, um, you know, struggling, 
you know some you know and then you know the homeless people there's many homeless people in homeless shelters in this world right so death comes into when you start to focus on dharma the four basic requirements and contentment starts to be the 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 centerpiece of your awareness of your sati of what you're paying attention to and steadiness of mind and and you and steady as steadiness of mind starts to be the center because you start to realize that first of all this life is impermanent and that it, it starts and it ends at some point this life however there's there's a period where we all have to go through which is the sickness and old age period right and death now death is the final result death is the future of birth right death is the future of birth now we talk about future in life and we're, we're sold on this ticket or sold on this dream that it's career and everything else but it's not the, the the future of birth is death the future of life is death right so being being clear about this is good for your mental organization and it's actually good for your mental health because then you can reorganize and re and and uh refocus and refocus your center and start to understand okay so what is the goal here what is the goal here right so that's where you start to develop the virtue of contentment you start to understand what real happiness is ha how real happiness is is having what you need really uh, the wants well that's always that's always like uh, uh the joker card that's always like the the trick because wants are neither here or there right wants are neither here or there because and also when you get something then you want something else and that's also a treadmill that you can see a lot of people are on and if you know what i'm talking about for yourself it's like when you're earning money and you get what you want you think you got what you want it's not what you want so then you have to get something else that you want and it's forever going and is there real is there any real happiness in wants and that's where that's that's what um the center point of contentment is right <clears throat> the center point of contentment is being content with what you do have appreciating what you do have and making the best of what you have but also understanding where happiness lies and where does happiness lie where does happiness lie does it happen does happiness lie in wants or does happiness lie within does happiness lie in a purified chitta or a chitta full of defilements <clears throat> and desires that never get quenched right so this is a question where you start to engage in dharma so mental organization right mental organization comes with this awareness of this reflection of starting to understand of, of mentally organizing what 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 is what matters in your life and what is important and what is not important right what what you can achieve what you can't achieve so when you're trying to achieve you also always need to have the in your the back of your mind that you may not get it that doesn't mean you don't strive for it but you also understand that you also have to have a plan b for failure which is which is intelligent in my view but also understand it does that doesn't stop like that it doesn't stop there death stops at all now the funny thing about death or the truth about death is that whatever you've wanted whatever you've achieved in terms of material wealth in terms of career that all gets abandoned that all gets left so then you're left with the question what are you left with at death right what are you left with what do you got and buddhism this is the the answers are there so in other words you're left with your merit you're left with your steady mind you're left with your awareness you're left with your right views you're left with the the virtues you've developed so wherever you go thereafter all right when death comes wherever you go thereafter hopefully you've developed a strong platform to go to a better place now when you keep this in mind all the time when you're sati when you keep this in mind and bring this buddhist concept or this buddhist practice within your life you'll achieve happiness a lot quicker you'll achieve contentment a lot quicker but also you'll keep a steady state a steady state of focus on the fact that this life will end you know it will end so you won't spend waste your time on things that are frivolous and you won't waste your time on wants so much what you will do is gather what you need and be content with that and that but believe it or not can create a lot of happiness in you and create and can create a lot of satisfaction but also create a lot of steadiness a lot of calm a lot of tranquility and serenity in you 
because that's that creates a platform where you where you start to fall within the parameter of of the four noble truths you start to fall into the parameters of the the noble eightfold path where you start to focus on developing factors rather than chasing uh, material comforts and needs that that really you will you abandon anyway so what you take with you are the riches of your practice after death you take the riches and the virtues of what you've cultivated and developed during your lifetime the car the house the family everything else that gets abandoned right now i'm not playing down family i've never played down family i'm not saying mum and dad kids and family is not important don't take me out of context okay we're not and that's another discussion which i'll talk about but the main responsibility though is that when we die do we want to go to a better place what how do we get there well we don't get there um le leading a heed uh heedless life now, the buddha talks about being heedful and when you when when you've led a life of cultivation and development of the factors you're you're developing a certain level of richness in yourself and if you're able to purify yourself and get your chitta and get your awareness to a very high state um, of understanding a very high state of tranquility of focus and understanding truth and dharma as it is then you're taking all that wealth and richness okay with you wherever you go okay the belongings and everybody else around you even your teeth they don't come with you when you go or go with the chitta right they don't come so this is how you incorporate the dharma into your lay life and you're still able to work and all those kind of things but you always got to keep the sati entwined right the sati the awareness of life and death old age and sickness the awareness of the difference between needs and wants the awareness of time the length of time so you start to mentally organize yourself in a way that you're able to get to the goal right you get able to uh, get to the goal of the buddhist goal and what the buddha talks about and also be able to live um, a, a quite contented happy and fruitful life for yourself and for others and to also be able to share and help other people first but you need to maintain so, you know, the, there's another cliche, and I told you I loved using cliche. There's a cliche, like, you can take care of everybody else's garden and neglect your own, but when you need to go into your garden and get some nutrition, right, you can't. Everybody else, you've planted fruit trees in everybody else's gardens, and they've all got beautiful gardens with fruit trees whenever they need the, to eat some fruit or get some herbs from the garden, but you walk into your own garden and it's full of weeds, and that's not useful for yourself. And that's not useful for others and that's that's where altruism goes to now what we're trying to do is get to the middle path right and this is what i'm saying every human being all of us we're responsible to get our needs met to to get our needs and and an important um realization of this is to understand what needs actually are have you focused on your needs have you reflectors on reflected on the difference between needs and wants have you mentally organized yourself and your life and your practice and put it all into perspective so you can go ahead and cultivate and develop now when you're farming uh, you know i'm living on a farm right now as well there's part of this monastery is farmland it needs everything needs to be organized before the seed gets planted including um you know the the agriculture like the how the water has to go in what, what do you call it the plumbing systems or whatever I don't know the exact farming terms or whatever but even farming itself has has to be organized right in order to uh, uh, grow a successful crop but even then you know that's neither here or there because the weather can damage it if it, if you go through a drought or uh, you've got uh, animals and insects that can destroy your crops and all kinds of things that can destroy your crops so you, you have to be organized there needs to be a level of discipline and organization to try to an art form and science in order to eliminate the factors that will destroy the crop and to give the crop every chance of success so if you want to give your life every chance of success mental organization is crucial now if you want to give your life success in terms of the buddhist goal as well then you need to incorporate dharma into it and start to understand that there needs to be time dedicated to cultivation and develop 
And eventually that needs to become the central factor because without that, what are you taking to your next life or to the next step? You know what I'm saying? So that's something that uh, you need to sit down and focus on when you're meditating or concentrating, that awareness and sati and me- on your mental health, on mental clarity, right? Mental clarity is seeing things as they are, staying within the truth, of, as I said in a previous video, right? So these things here are the parameters of creating good sati. And then when you go into meditation, you can take sati to the, to the meditative level or to the, or to the higher level where you're starting to engage in Satipatthana, where you actually stop clinging to all the things in the world and start to understand your body, feelings, chitta, and phenomena. So step by step, right? Step by step. But what I urge you to do is after this video is sit down for an hour or so, uh, maybe get a pen and paper and start to clarify for yourself, get mental clarity on what your needs are, what your wants are, and what your practice should be developing because death is the future of life right and what you want to be doing is carrying out a wealth to death you want to be wealthy when you die not materially wealthy or if that comes to you good for you good luck but in terms of chitta wealth purified chitta right a non-defiled chitta right a wise chitta wisdom right all the virtues built up over your lifetime life uh, over a lifetime of practice and cultivation you take that with you. That you should. That should be part of your financial plan. That should be part of your investment strategy in Buddhism as well as everything else. And you'll find, like I've always said, the more wisdom you have, the more able you are to do and uh, create and achieve in your daily lifestyle. But remember, once, once, you can't get what you want, right? Like the Rolling Stones were saying, <laughs> you can't always get what you want. Maybe they read that in the Buddha Dharma, I'm not sure. But remember, not, I'm not saying you can't get what you want as an absolute um, ab, as an abs, absolute thing. Sometimes you may get what you want, you might get lucky. But reflect on that clearly for yourself to understand what we're talking about. It's a hit or miss. It's neither here or there. But needs cannot be neglected. Needs cannot be neglected. Try, not, try to go out in zero degree weather without no clothes on. You need clothes. Try not eating you know, for six months, you know, you might be able to get away for a day or two, unless you're in fasting mode, but that's a fasting mode for a particular practice. I'm talking about, um, you know, living a daily life, you need to eat, you need to quench the hunger, right? Or temporarily anyway, because hunger doesn't go away. But, you know, so you you can't live without food and water, you need those things, you need shelter, you need to have a bath, a a shower, you need a toilet, you need somewhere to sleep, you need somewhere where you, you have some protection from the elements and from the scary stuff out there or the or the bad stuff out there on the street, right? So these things are important. Or medicine when you're sick, right? Um, or, or um, let's say, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, what do you call it, damn it? Uh, let's say uh, you need to be disposed to or have the ability to get to a medical place when you need it right or just have medicine in your cabinet etc 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 right so these kind of things are, are your needs and they need to be checked every day now once they're checked contentment comes because you know that the the basics are done are dealt with the basics are clear in your mind so then you can get to the wants the wants okay and then you can start to decipher yourself mentally and clearly what you actually want and what you do and what you are prepared to devote time to and the time is it taking away from your cultivation and development of factors because remember that's where the real wealth is me growing dumb thank you for watching the video if you enjoyed it please subscribe and share with your friends